to tap into your inner strength. We have an amazing show for you today. This is going to be deep and awesome, and you will not be the same after watching this show. We have a fantastic guest. Her name is Aliza Bulo. She is just, um, just uh, you can't get enough of her. So stay tuned. We're going to have a great show. Hey guys, here's an amazing thing. Don't you all want inner strength? Like what else could be the most important ingredient in our day, right? Like you can have a million things flying, but if you have inner strength, you can accomplish a lot. So we're gonna learn exactly step-by-step step how to get there by the end of this show. You will walk out a powerhouse knowing exactly how to tap into your own inner strength. We have a very special guest. Her name is Aliza Bulo and she is from Denver and she is started an organization called CORE, which is empowering women to empower women. It's really awesome. She's gonna tell you more about it, but we're gonna start with a very, first we're gonna welcome her and then we're gonna start with a very important question. So first of all, welcome Aliza. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Hi, Leah. It's so great to be here. I'm so glad to be, to be with you today. You're yeah. so great. Okay, so good. So we're we go right in deep and we go fast. So great. I just want okay. So I just want to ask you, what exactly is inner strength? Like, define it for us so that we can know what what we're talking about. Okay. So the great thing about inner strength is it can't be defined, and it's different for every single person. But I want to go to the core and talk to the the basic essence of female inner strength. Jewish, not Jewish. If we look at our first, first, first foremother that we have like to discuss, we talk about Eve. And really, she was first named woman. And then her name was changed to Eve because before she was ever a mother, she was called the mother of all life. The inner strength of every woman is to breathe life into other things. And I really feel like inner strength comes from channeling that energy. It's not necessarily something that sits inside you, but something that flows through you. So if you can tap into the roots of Eve and feel that strength flowing through you, that is the root of inner strength. There's a lot of branches and hopefully we'll get to some of those. Okay, so explain to me what do you mean the root? Like, okay, so that sounds great. Okay, how do I tap into now? I, 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 okay, I buy it. How do I okay. tap into the flow? How do you tap into it? Okay, so the first aspect is actually, how did she get her name? It was really from Adam, who should have yelled at her right after this whole big mess, and he doesn't. There, just imagine them standing outside the doors of Eden. The gates are slammed shut, and the world is rough, and he could have looked at her and said, you, you brought us here. What were you thinking? And he doesn't. The first thing he does is rename her, and he says, you were a woman, now you're Eve, the mother of all life. So what he's saying is, I see the good in you, and I'm calling that forth. I have a good eye. And the partner that I want to walk forward with is a woman of strength, not a woman of deceit or difficulty, but the strength that's in you. We all have hard parts and we all have great parts. And the part of being tapping into that root is look for the good and walk forward with that. Collect what you want to work with and leave behind the stuff that you don't want to work with. So you're saying like, look at my own inner qualities, right? Do some introspection, exactly. look at my own... and. You know, a lot of times they say that, you know, when you're trying to accomplish something like don't don't say, OK, I'm going to now start walking five miles every day, you know, do something little that you can do. You know what? Instead of sitting, I'm going to put a timer on instead of sitting my computer for an hour every day, I'm just going to have a little beeper go off every 15 minutes. And when it beeps, I'm going to go walk around and sit down again, something like that. Right. It's, that's, that's nice. But you're talking leaves and I'm talking about roots. OK, those are like the tiniest little actions that you can do, which is fantastic. And you have to get to the leaves. But let's start with the roots. The root is knowing that you are the mother of all life and you have that capacity. And now you can go into branches and see what else is available. So um, there's a lot of other branches of strength that we could talk about, but hold you're on, talking I action. Hold on. Okay, go ahead. What's the question? No? Where's Sari? <laughs> oh, she, I don't know. She keeps muting, unmuting. Is every. Are you no, I'm here. I'm here. I'm just going between trying to set up at the very okay. beginning. I have to set up the other channels. Oh, so okay. I'm just waiting for Instagram to pop in. Um, but yeah, so far we're, we're good. Okay. We're just okay. Trying I thought that people, I'm just trying to get into it. Okay, fine. Okay. Sorry. I <laughs> thought that was a, a, a okay, but good, fine. but good, good turn off. And I'm going to be right back then with something else. Shortly. Okay. Okay. Fine. Okay. Good. So the issue is that, um, the, the, so you're saying from the root, so understanding. So before you get to step one, you have to understand who you are. You have to understand as a woman that you can tap into Eve's, the, the, the being the mother of all things. Mother of all life. 
mother of, mother all. of all things, <laughs> mother of all life. Aim kol chai. You have an, an energy of life that's within you that can flow forward. So that's number one. So then how do you channel that? If you think about that as the roots. So then think about who you are as a trunk. So it flows, that energy flows from below, but flows into you then specifically. Who are you as a person? Okay, now, so you can understand who are you as a person and how does that energy flow through you? Where will that manifest in your life? What's your inner strength? So one is the energy of all women, the energy of life and being a life giver, not necessarily biologically. She wasn't a mother yet, but she has the life, the energy to breathe life into things, to bring them forth. So that's energy number one. But then we can look at the specific branches of who we are. So I then move into a more of a Jewish paradigm. Who am I as a Jewish woman? And how do I see that manifesting in my life? So are you ready to hear about some of those energies? I am, but I just, just because I'm, I'm, a, um, I, I'm bent on the practical side a little bit, like I'm just not quite sure, you know, if I'm taking, if, if I want to tap into my own inner strength, you know, everybody else probably gets it. And I'm just, I'm a little slow on the uptake, but I just want to make sure I'm understanding that it's just having in mind that that's, that's the ground that I stand on that causes the game change. The ground that you stand on and then the practical aspect, the practical tool for the Eve energy right. is to have an Ayn Tova. We have two eyes, one that sees the good and one that sees the bad. A lot of times we have two eyes that see the bad and it's up to us to choose what we want to see. So if the, the, the practical manifestation of the Eve energy is to see the good and call it forth, right? Focus on that. So this is something important that my mother taught me <clears throat> early in my marriage, that if you have a fight with your husband and you win, who are you married to? A loser. So who wants to be married to a loser? Why should you fight and one wins and one loses and then you're married to a loser? So better you should be a team. And she actually sat my husband and me across from the table and she put something in between us. She said, this is your issue. It's right in between you and you're arguing over it. She said, you know what? get up from the table and walk around, come sit next to him. The issue's in the same place, but now you're a team facing it instead of it dividing you. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. So, right? It was such a great marriage tool to have early in my marriage, but to really know we are a team and whatever issue is there, let's face it together. Because if one loses, the other's married to a loser and we both want to be married to winners. So this, no. uh, let's get back to the eye and toe because I'm liking this very. That's a good eye. So you're saying a good eye that taps into Eve's energy. How is yeah. that? I yeah. don't understand the chain, or I don't need to understand. It. I just do. No, it. the chain is that that's why Adam named her that. She just sinned. She just caused him to fall. She just caused the. She just caused them to be kicked out of Eden. And the very first thing he says to her is, "I'm changing your name. I'm going to call you Chava, the mother of all life." Because he looked at her and saw that there's good in her, even though she just did a lot of bad stuff and there's a lot of bad consequences. I mean, they're facing a shattered world together. And he says, you know what? I'm going to face it with you. I'm going to give you a name that calls you forth. So he called her forth, but that's the essence of her name is there's something good in me. And I'm leaving behind all the negative that I just did that made a huge mess. But we're going to walk forward as a team because with all these briars and brambles in front of us, we need a team to face it. So let's be a team and walk forward. So, so Elise, um, Leah, so we have someone who's saying <laughs> that, by the way, that sounds amazing and such a good concept. They never heard that take, but that's very nice. But it, why can't our husbands be like Adam then? Who, <laughs> no matter what we do wrong, they see the good, right? You know so we can lead the way in that too, because the more that we see the good and call out the good, the more than we set that we set that example. Another tool that I learned actually from Rebbe Tantila Yeager in my early marriage was the, the verse in um, Aisha Chayil and the Woman of Valor, Gamlahu Tov Velora. She repays to him his good and not his bad. That verse has been in my mouth almost every day. Now, not so much because my husband only does good. But anytime he did something difficult, I would say to myself, just repay his good and not his bad. Husbands come with good and bad. So if you're gonna if you're gonna interact with the bad, you're gonna make a mess of things. Repay his good and don't repay his bad. That's up to you. You get to make a choice on what you want to repay. It's completely up to you. Doesn't mean you don't have to deal with it, smoothen it, but repay the good. 
it's fantastic. I just don't want to drop. You said you have an eye and toe. You look good on somebody, and you said, and then you call it forth. Explain how to call it forth. Explain how to call it forth. So first of all, you look for it. Actually seek it out. And then work with that. So many people work with what they hate working with. I can't believe that he never thanks me. I can't believe he doesn't respect me. I can't believe that. So now you're looking at all the bad and you're calling that forth because you're actually making it, you're, you're, you're churning it up where you're emotionally in, it, you're right. engaging with that and you're fertilizing it. Why water that? You don't want that to grow. Water what you want to grow. So calling forth is to water and fertilize and put sunshine on the good stuff. There's for sure bad stuff. There's for sure bad stuff. Give us an example of exactly how you want a person would do that. It's awesome. Um, let's see. So <laughs> let's just take grocery shopping. Almost every husband brings home the wrong stuff, right? <laughs> so they walk in the door with loads of stuff and you say, "Not that's a cabbage. I asked for lettuce. Don't you know the difference between round green things? I mean, come on, right? So why should you say that? He just brought home groceries. Thank you so much for bringing home the groceries. I so appreciate the time that you took to go to the store and bring this all. Put it all away and you don't have to say anything about the cabbage. When he says, we're having burgers tonight, should we get out that lettuce? You could say, ah, actually it was a cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> lettuce looks like this, cabbage looks like that, right? But so that's one of the things I've done is um, uh, educate, don't berate. That's one of my um, phrases, educate, don't berate. So you just say, cabbage looks like this, lettuce looks like that. Right? Or for the same thing for a kid. You educate, don't be right. Our coats go on the hook. Instead of saying, why? Every time you walk in the house, you throw your coat on the floor. What do you think I am? You're made. I need to pick this up. No, educate, don't be right. Coats will- It keeps drops on our houses, I can tell. <laughs> it's, so, it's so funny, Leah, because this is exactly what happened yesterday with my husband. He, The kids have been coloring in the room and they've been using these permanent markers that get all over the floor. Uh -huh. So he's like, and we, it's fine because it goes off with nail polish remover, amazing little hack, takes off things from wood, Pick wonderful, <laughs> but go nail polish remover. But, but he really was like at the point where he's like, I can't take this anymore. And he went, when he was at Ralph's, he bought a pack of uh, washable markers, right? And he comes in with the washable markers and he comes into him and he shows me the washable markers. Like, look, I found washable markers at Ralph's. I'm so excited. And I'm like, oh my God, we have downstairs in the, in the like supplies drawer. And he like looks at me, he goes, really? Not, and I'm thinking, oh no, I'm not supposed to do that. So I literally like start back to, I'm like, oh no, actually, you know what? Oh I, yeah, those washable markers look really good. And, and he looks at me and you know Leia already, he knows me. So he's like, <laughs> okay, you think I don't know what you're trying to do? <laughs> you, you totally think that I'm an idiot for buying washable markers and not looking in the junk drawer. But, he, but goes, I, he says, but I appreciate the sentiment that you're trying to like, <laughs> make <laughs> Pat back over the, okay, so I get it. Okay, so in terms of, thank you, that was awesome. So in terms of bringing forth the um, good and being having a good eye, that is just focusing on it, verbalizing it, thinking about that, putting your attention on the good and letting, how do you, how, just from a practical sense, how does a person like something? Your husband walks in and there he is holding the cabbage, and you're just like, Ugh. "How do you get, gain self mastery to, you know, we got the duct tape, the the, the, the right. talk show duct tape? How do you not say anything? How do you how do you become that person and evolve to be at that level where you can say, "Oh, I thank you, dear." It's practice. It's actually practice, and you do have to practice it. I think it's really important to know, like we, one of the sentences that I heard a while ago is that we often overestimate what we can accomplish in a year and we underestimate what we can accomplish in a decade. And the truth is with Wait, a decade say that, of practice. Say that, say, that, say it again. We often overestimate what we can accomplish in a year and underestimate what we can accomplish in a decade. That's pretty amazing. So meaning we can do a whole lot more if we set our mind to it in a decade. <sighs> A lot more. Wow. You think about it. You think, okay, by this time next year, I want my marriage to be perfect. Okay. But if you work on it slow and then you're frustrated the next year, it's not. But you know what? You put some effort into really focusing on the good, to being really thankful for every act of service, every warm touch, every smile, really like, and be a giving, loving person and receive their gifts of love too. And in a decade, you're going to have a much warmer marriage that you're living in. Much. 
That's fantastic. So. Okay, let's go into the next meat of that I think This is fantastic, Lisa. We already, if you, if anyone, st you, not that you should stop watching now, but if you've got enough, you know, it, really fantastic. So now let's go right into what you said about inner strength, because I want to tap into, you said you have some, some, a series of things that women can do, Jewish women, it's a Jewish source thing of yeah. what, how, um, you said something about Evid in our pre-interview. Avery, I said something oh, about Avery. Avery. Right. So I'm going to tell you, so as we know as Jews, that the name says what's there. The shame is Masham. The name is what's there. So it describes something that's there. So let's just talk about our names as Jews, right? We're called three, really four, but I'm going to talk about three names of the Jews that are listed in the Torah. There's Hebrew. We're Hebrews. We're Jews and we're Israelites, right? So we're Ivri, yes, um, Yehudi, and Yisrael. That's our name. So Hebrew, where does that name come from? Abraham and Sarah are the first Hebrews because they came from the other side of the river. They're, so really the word Ivri is other side. They came from the other side of the river. We're still called Hebrews today. Not because we came from the other side of the river. What is other cider about us today? So other cider about the Jews is that we stand on the other side of world opinion all the time. We are other siders. We do things differently. We're countercultural movement. That's what it is to be a Jew is to be countercultural, which is why we are considered a stiff neck people or one of our primary traits is chutzpah. We're so chutzpahic. Like we really have a lot of strength. That's a lot of inner strength to be chutzpahic. No question about it. But the ability to be an under other sider is that first aspect of being a Jew. So what is it to be Abraham and Sarah? Right? To be all alone in the desert teaching something new with no neighbors, no friends, no family that's coming in. And we flew in for Yitzchak's bar mitzvah or brought cookies from Brooklyn. You can tell I'm from out of town in Los Angeles. You can buy that stuff, but in Denver, you cannot. Our family <laughs> brings it in when they come from Brooklyn or LA, right? And they had nobody to do that for them. They stood alone trying to teach something completely new. We can pull on that strength, the ability to stand alone and apart with strength comes from Abraham and Sarah. And we pull on that sometimes to be countercultural in the way that we dress, in the way that we speak, in the way that we relate to our husbands, in the way that we relate to our children, in the way that we relate to our neighbors, and sometimes inside our families. Sometimes we have to be able to stand alone, sometimes against a parent, sometimes against the child, sometimes against the husband or a part. That, that helpmate against him sometimes requires that ability to be against. And the strength for against comes from Ivry, the ability to stand apart and stand strong with no one around you doing the same thing. So that is a vital Jewish energy, is that Ivry energy. So how do we tap into that? I personally tap into that <clears throat> in a physical way. So as Jews, we have all these mitzvahs. What is a mitzvah? I'll give you my Torah Eliza on a mitzvah. Um, the definition of a mitzvah, good deed, commandment, whatever it is, connecting thing. <clears throat> so a mitzvah is a physical pathway to a spiritual destination. Say it again. A mitzvah is a physical pathway to a spiritual destination. Physical pathway means something you do and then that gets you somewhere spiritually. Right, right. I'm with you. Because that's what it is. You do something that's transformative spiritually. We're body and soul together. So we have to, what are we here in a body for? Because really, ultimately, we're souls. Souls before we're born and souls after we die. We dip into this world. We wear a body for however long we wear it. And then we leave the body behind. We're still souls. So what's the point of the body? The point of the body is to wear this garment that can interact in this world that allows us to do physical things for the point of what? It's just going to die and go in the ground. For the point of our soul and its transformation. So we do stuff to shift our soul. That's what a mitzvah is. Something to do to shift our soul. So if we know as Jews that we can harness the physical to transform the spiritual. So the question is, how do we get to inner strength? Start with something physical. So there's all kinds of things you can do. But a first thing that I do, if I need it, is I just plant myself firmly on the ground, stand straight. And I actually imagine, but I feel it on my, on, under my feet. I imagine my roots going down to Abraham and Sarah and feel that strength. Now, I put a lot of mitzvahs into my life. So I have lots of things that I can do, but I feel in those things that I am transforming spiritually. So, and sometimes it's uncomfortable. Put on, what is this? How weird is it? 
to wear fake hair on your head. I, I don't know if everybody else knows, but it's, I mean, I bought it, it's mine, but I didn't grow it. I often think like, what thoughts were thunk under this hair before I thought my thoughts under this hair, right? What a weird thought is that? <laughs> Who was thinking what under your hair? But to wear that in this world is an other cider thing to do. Very interesting. Right? So the way you dress in the heat, when you wear long sleeves, when you wear whatever it is, the way that you dress, you walk out in the world and you say, I'm an other cider. You're in Los Angeles. Who's wearing long sleeves like that in Los Angeles? So how is that giving, how is that tapping into our inner strength? It's strengthening your inner strength. It's Sorry. actually walking it. It's strengthening it. The, the, when you get dressed in the morning that way, it is a display of strength. It might just be rote. If it's rote, because that's what you have in your closet, because that's what you bought, but those are all the choices that you made when you were in the store, and that's what you put in your closet. And when you look at yourself in the mirror and make sure and you do that final check, am I pretty? Am I modest? Right? Both together. Right? So you're just, and that's rote. Like, is the sun shining through my skirt? I need an extra slip. Like, let's, let's just make sure, like, do I need a pin in the back? But whatever it is, right? All those checks are, I'm actually an other cider. I'm not walking out on the street just like that, just like anybody, just like showing whatever. I, I am being careful about what I show. So right there, you are strengthening that. Being an other cider, you're saying that's inner strength? Is that a, what a that's definition of inner An inner strength. It's an inner strength. An inner strength. Okay. Yes, it is an inner strength, the ability to be different than others. That's our, uh, that's our internal power that we have. Okay. Yeah. I actually, it's internal internal because I think people relate to that, but when a lot of people are, you know, that's something that's so hard for so many people because we all want to be the same as everyone else. And we don't like to stay outside of that. Um, I know it's something that I always had a very hard time with because I just wanted to fit in. I didn't want to stand out. And it's something that as she's saying it, I'm thinking, I get dressed every day, it's nice. I don't ever think about it. Like, oh, this is why I'm wearing it and it's giving me power. But it's really empowering to know, like you dressing like that gives you power. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about a contrasting force though, because the third name, we're not doing the second one yet, but the third name is Israel. The third name is Israelite. So where does that name come from? That is who, the first name is, is how I stand apart. But the name Israel, if you think about it, where do we get that name? We're not called the children of Abraham. We never call ourselves that. B'nai Avraham. That's not our name for ourselves. And we don't call ourselves the B'nai Yitzchak either. Right? The media might call us the Abrahamic faith, the Abraham Accords. That's nice. But that's not the Jewish name for us. The Jewish name for us is B'nai Yisrael. Right? Or Beit Yaakov. Right? We're the children of the third of the three forefathers. Right? Why? Because we have a job in this world and the job in this world to change all of humanity, to elevate everyone, to shine our light in this world requires more than one person with a great idea. So Abraham and Sarah, they were together, that one person with a great idea, but did they change the whole planet? They didn't. And neither did Yitzhak. And Yaakov was the father of the 12 tribes. It takes a critical mass to create this transformative movement that the Jews are about. So Yisrael is who we stand with, right? If, if Ivri is how we stand apart, how we stand alone, Yisrael is who we stand with. Mm. And that is a piece of inner strength that's absolutely vital. You need that ability to stand with. How hard is it to stand with people who are difficult, people that you disagree with, people who voted differently than you, people who wear masks differently than you, people who go to weddings differently than you, people who do Shabbos differently than you, people who eat differently than you, people who save differently than you, people who spend differently than you. They're all part of us and they're all so annoying, all of them, because they're our family, <laughs> right? I mean, a family is an amazing thing, but a family is full of annoying people. I mean, I think about it for my Pesach Seder, the worst part for me of making Pesach, a whole month of preparation, all that cooking and cleaning is the seating chart, right? Making sure that everybody is sitting next to somebody that they could stand for all those hours. <laughs> <laughs> I literally write all their names down. <clears throat> I make a model of the tables. I have like 30 people for the Seder. <clears throat> I put it on a cookie sheet 
and I, I arrange all the names and I bring it to the most difficult people in the family. And I say, does this seating chart work for you? And they rearrange the names. And then I take it to the next difficult person and they rearrange the names. I take it back and forth until like everybody agrees they can sit that way. And then I write it down and I rearrange for the second night. And at first I used to hate that. And then I realized, oh my gosh, look what I'm doing. It's such holy work. I'm making sure everyone has a seat at the table. How vital is that to make sure that everybody is welcome and everybody has a place and everybody's seated next to somebody that makes them feel comfortable and like we are one glorious, diverse, glorious family. Diverse with an emphasis on divorce. Right? Diverse. Yeah, a lot of diverse. Our, my family is all yeah. over the place, but we all have a seat at the table. And it's very yeah, a lot of people are connecting with this, Aliza, because I think today it there's such a there's so many, there's so much like conflict in the world and everyone's opinion is is like you can't even say your opinion half the time. And if you do, you're like, you don't know what the reaction is gonna be. It this is so important now to just be so Inclusive. like realizing they have a that you actually have inner power when you accept someone else for who they are and you accept your opinion, it makes you greater, not the opposite. That's right. That I think is what people are relating to. So yeah. we, we've tapped into the the uh, the first one is in terms of being other. Now we're tapping into inclusive as much as we can. And what's the third one? Yeah, it's the middle one really is Yehudi, Jew. What does it mean to be a Jew? Right? What is that name? And that name came from Leah's fourth son. So Jacob had four four wives, and there was a prophecy he's going to have twelve sons. So four wives, 12 sons, that means each wife should have three, right? So, you know, there's the whole Rachel, Leah, switcheroo, and Le Rachel's the beloved wife, and Leah feels hated, but she's the one that gives birth first. So her first child is named Ruvain, which means C. And she says, I'm naming him C because God sees my pain. I'm the hated one. And then she gives birth again. And the second one is child Shimon, which means here. And she says, I'm naming him here because God hears my pain. I'm the hated one. And the third one's name is Levi, which means a company. And she says, I'm naming him a company because God's accompanying me in my pain. So I'm the hated one. <laughs> and then she has a fourth, which is more than her share. And she names him Yehuda, which means thank you. And she says, this time I'm going to thank Hashem. I have more than my share. Now I feel loved. I really feel like now, now I've become somebody and I'm thankful for this. So we're all named after that. There's 12 tribes, but the name that devolved on all of us is Jew, Yehudi, which means both thank and admit. So this is what we stand for, right? Ivory is how we stand apart, but Yehudi is what we stand for. We stand for thankfulness, but we also st stand for God runs the world. We admit he's in charge, which it, or it's in charge. God's in charge. So if we understand that God's in charge, then we don't have to be. It really like it's a strength to say, I don't have to waste my energy on stuff that I can't fix. I really don't. Right. It's my job to work inside what Hashem has given me. But I, if I can't change it, so I can't change it. I'm just going to do my very best. So let's just say. Let's just say you have a husband that's a little bit annoying and is constantly buying cabbages, no matter how often you explain, that's a cabbage and it's not lettuce, right? Regular cabbage purchaser, right? So you've explained, you've tried, you're focusing on the good, you praise the lettuce every time you bring some lettuce, he's bringing home cabbages and it's so frustrating. So now what do you do, right? Now you release it because you can't fix it. So why let it stress you? It's not your ballpark. You make stewed cabbage, right? And if your husband doesn't like it, so you run out and you buy lettuce, but whatever it is, or you just say that this is, we don't eat lettuce anymore. We have hamburgers with no lettuce, right? Cause that's how we do it in our house. <laughs> but whatever it is, of course, that's not exactly it, but like you- Or just, somebody you, said hamburger with cabbage on top. Cabbage is crunchy. People are saying it's actually very good. <laughs> <laughs> it might be, it might be. But what I'm using it, of course, as a parable, not as an exact thing. But I'm saying when the thing keeps happening, that's so frustrating for you in the world, right? When the wrong person gets elected, whatever that is, right? When the when somebody backs into your car, when so there's a leak in the roof and you can't fix it, whatever it is, like stuff happens and it's not in your control. So why should you spaz about it? <laughs> Just like 
really just do what you need to do to move through it. So here's one of my tools that is a, 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 a Lisa Bulow patent. It's called skip step two. Okay, step one, something bad happens. Step two, you get upset about it. Blame, shame, upset, drama. Step three, you deal with it. So just skip step two. Like, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> just skip it, right? So I was trying to, I was thinking about a talk that I was going to give once and I was going to teach skip step two. And I, I asked my son, like, what point should I bring? He says, why don't you just teach people to skip step one? I'm like, well, step one is not in your control, right? Your car was damaged. The roof leaked. The, um, the whatever it is. Really, step one is you did something or somebody did something to you. They bashed into your car or you didn't pay attention backing up. Your car now has a thousand dollars worth of damage. Okay. You can blame or shame yourself, right? I can't believe it. I didn't see that dump. What an idiot am I? Or your kid took your car and they dented it. I can't believe you. What were you thinking? I didn't give you permission. Whatever it is, right? Blame, shame. Anyway, your car is dented. Anyway, it's going to cost you a thousand dollars to fix it. Why should you also be angry at yourself? Or why should you also dent your relationship with your child? Right? You have a dented car. That's all you need, right? It's going to cost you a thousand dollars. Why should it cost you frustration too? Once you realize you're actually in control of that and it takes practice, you start on small things, skip step two. Just I love it. it. I love it. It's but so helpful. Leah, then how do you teach? How do you impart a lesson? Meaning the fact that you feel bad about it or the fact that you're upset at yourself about it or the fact that you reprimand your kid about it, that's how they learn not to do it next time. Is it? Is the drama how they learn not to do it next time? Or is the conversation where you sit down with them and say, gosh, a thousand dollars, that's going to be so hard for you to earn to fix the car. Would you like it if I give you a loan and you can pay it out over time? Or if I speak to Mrs. Smith across the street and see if you can be her regular leaf raker or snow shoveler so you can earn that money? Like, it's really hard to earn $1,000. I want to support you while you take care of your responsibility. That's how you learn. It's not, what were you thinking? I can't believe you damaged the car. The anchor is not the teacher, right? It's the process. It doesn't mean you don't teach. It doesn't mean you don't problem solve. But it's the drama that you're skipping, the anger, the blaming, and the shaming. Totally skippable. Skip step two. Okay, so tell, I love that. Tell me what now, from the sort of revelations of what we learned from our forefathers in terms of um, our identity of grabbing our inner strength, let's get into some practical tools that people can start using today on how on how to tap into their inner strength. Everybody's wrung out rag. We're like, you know, with COVID and we're home and we're teaching one minute and then our kids are in and then they're out and then they're, everybody is dealing with a lot right now. They're dealing yeah, with please. the husband out of work. They're dealing with loss of income. They're dealing with all kinds of stuff and inner strength would turn a light on all of the dark corners of our lives. And that's what right. we want. Okay. Practice. So that's what you think. You think that right now, inner strength is what we need to pull on. We all have it and people are feeling empty, right? Let's talk about outer strength for a minute because sometimes we need outer strength. Oh, outer strength. Not outer strength. Let's talk about outer strength for just a moment. So I want to tell you one more biblical story <laughs> for outer strength. And that's the story of Moses standing on the top of the mountain and the Amalekites are fighting the Israelites and, and, and Moses is standing like this with his arms upstretched and that's how he's supposed to stand. And as long as his arms are up, the Jews win. But how hard is it to stand with your arms like this for a long time? It's a battle all day long. He's standing in the hot sun on the top of a mountain and his arms slowly go down. And as his arms go down, the Jews start to lose. Arms back up, the Jews are winning. Arms back down, the Jews start to lose. Up, down, up, down. It's not going so well. And what happens? Aaron and Hur see what's happening and they run in. Each one grabs an arm. First, they take a rock actually and they give him to sit down, right? They say, have a seat, right? No, it doesn't have a cushion on it. It's not that comfortable. But sit down. First, come down a little bit and then they each hold an arm. Moshe didn't say, Aaron and Hur, I need some support here. Aaron and Hur looked at Moshe and said, Mysh, what's going on? You need help. How could we support you? And they didn't even ask the question. They just swooped in. They gave him, they let him sit down to rest a drop. And then they each took an arm. And then it says, and his arms were steady. But the word that's used for steady is emunah. 
His arms were emuna. His arms were faithful. If you want to be faithful, if you want to have strong faith, if you want to be faithful towards, towards Hashem, towards the Jewish people, towards yourself, towards your husband, towards your children, towards your society, you need a friend on each side. Even Moshe needed a friend on each side. It's not possible to do it alone. So how do you do that? It's not that you're calling in the friends. Be the friend. But create an environment where people realize you have to be a friend. But we must have friends. That's what strengthens us. We must. There is no way that we can function all alone. Nobody can function on inner strength alone. That's not how we're built. We are built to be in society. And we need to have and be friends. And that will call forth our inner strength. Our inner strength. So wait a second. You're saying, the, so the call to action here is to do is to see what, when you notice somebody, a need, you fill it. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it doesn't have to be the whole thing because people are so drained. Stand next to somebody, find somebody that you can, you need a girlfriend. It's not, our marriages today are so strained because we're so busy not having friends or thinking that our phones meet our friendship needs with all the friends that we do online. It's not, it actually doesn't meet that deep need for interpersonal connection that we must have and that we crave. And that if we don't get it from girlfriends, we beg it from our husbands who can't really deliver that. And it puts a strain on our marriage that's not, not appropriate. Right. So I actually got a call from somebody last week where she said, you know, Leah, I don't know what to do. I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm now the, the full-time nanny, full-time housekeeper. Cause they don't, they're very strict on COVID full-time housekeeper and full-time uh, homeschooling mom or whatever. And my issue is that all my friends have just kind of fizzled away. She said, because uh, we they do social distancing like their idea of a social distance lunch in the backyard is you know everyone the tables are all set 10 feet apart you know but everybody mingles she said right. so we can't be part of that we don't want we don't feel safe and so we're kind of not invited to anything anymore we're not you know and, and i said well can you connect on the phone and she said oh, you know, they, they're annoyed at us. Like they're, mm -hmm. you know, I, I feel like I've lost one of my best friends. I feel like I've lost because she thinks she's taking it very personally that I'm so strict. Um, and I don't know what to do. Right. It's really a challenge. And especially in these days, we really do have to put energy into friendships in a very serious way. So if you can't get together safely as families, if you don't feel comfortable, you probably could take a walk with one person. And you really need to put the energy into that to really say, okay, maybe it's two or three, maybe it's one person a week that I'm walking with, but that group of three that I zoom with once a week, and I walk with each one of them once a week. So one week it's Sally and one week it's Susie and one week it's Jane. And, but every week we zoom together, but this way people are mixing it up a little bit so that they do see each other in person but they are chatting as a group. So you're maintaining some group connections with the real offline relationships, but developing those offline real relationships is vital. Of course, during COVID, we can use online communication like Zoom or FaceTime or whatever to have a real conversation, but it should be a conversation with somebody who's in your community that's a real relationship, that you're developing a real relationship. We need those. We can't really function without them. It's absolutely vital to have really good friends. So I'd like to everybody to type in, are you guys having a difficult time connecting with your friends? To, you know, to share with me what your thoughts are on that. Because I'm finding that the, across the board, people saying, yeah, I haven't seen anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and actually, and then there's a whole group of people who are seeing people who then the people who don't see anybody don't even want to see even less. You know, it's like even them walking in the same direction. You know, if somebody doesn't have that mindset and you're even going for a walk with them and you're wearing a mask, you know, if they've been, they're totally social, whatever, you don't necessarily trust that they're not going to wear it onto their nose, you know, like, you know, you see these people, uh, excuse right. me, like, hello, you know, whatever. So everyone has their own different, different, uh, it's, it's, they do, but you know what, you can also meet in a park and sit at a picnic bench six feet apart. And if, if you're not in Los Angeles where it's cold, so it's okay to have a blanket and say, you know what, our friendship is so important that for one hour, I'm going to bundle up and we're going to sit outside in the park and talk a little louder so we can chat with each other. It's vital. Yeah. So somebody actually on, on, on Instagram said, um, 
that as a single mom, it's been very isolating because they just do their own thing every Shabbos with their kids. She said, and she gets judged because she does go out and she does do social things and play dates with her kids because she can't stop her life. You know, they have nobody otherwise. And I think that's the bottom line. I think a lot of people are seeing, I think at this point, especially, it's almost people are making this like sort of um, choice where they're saying, I'm more afraid of the isolation and what it's causing, the trauma it's causing to my family, my kids and myself more than I am afraid of getting sick because I just can't continue. Like how long right. is this going to be? I hear that. And actually I don't want to get into whole COVID conversation because that's very, no, but I want to, but I want to give you these two tools now that now that we talked about Ivory and Yisrael, you have these two tools you could think about. So first of all, you pull on your Yisrael, your Ivory energy and say the decision that I made vis-a-vis -vis whatever it is, I'm sending my kids to school and sending them on play dates. I'm staying separate. I'm mixing whatever it is. You could be an Ivory. You made a decision, a considered decision, and other people are judging you about it, but you have that inner strength to stand apart and stand alone because you made a considered decision. Now you have the tension with that and your Yisrael energy, but I want to be a joiner. How will I join? I'm part of this group, right? So how do I stand with these people when they're doing things that are frustrating for me or that I disapprove of? But we know that standing with is vital. Like even going to shul, like some people joke, they go to shul JFK. You know what that is, JFK? Just for Kiddush, right? Just for Kiddush, because why? <laughs> we got a lot of laughs here, okay? <laughs> why? Because you can talk to Hashem anywhere, but you have to go to shul to talk to a Jew. You know, like you go to shul because that's where the Jews are. Even if you're not a davener, even if you're not, you don't really care about the lane, whatever, the Dvar Torah, you could really, it's not your thing. But you want to go schmooze. You, so we don't have that today, right? But you do want to be where the Jews are. So somehow you have to feel connected, even in the disconnect. That's part of being a Yisrael. It's saying we're all on the same team. And even when people want to throw the game sometimes, I'm not leaving the team. I am a team player. And I'm on the team of the Jewish people, no matter what, even with frustrating teammates. I'm on the team. We're going to ride this out. The whole thing is going to be over. Patience is really important. Lots of hearts, by the way, Leah. Tons okay, and tons that's of awesome. Okay, so now uh, let's get some practicals. And I want to talk a little bit about CORE because you're trying to change the world. And uh, we'll get into that in a second. But I want to hear some actual practical tool tools that, you, you know, um, like maybe a lot of stories or examples or something like that. So people can really take this on in their own life because, you know, the, the points you made are brilliant and they're game changers in terms of how, how we're thinking. But in terms of in the heat of the moment, I'm not sure that those knowing that in the background is gonna- It's not, you need those, you need those phrases, make them into phrases. Look for what you wanna see, right? So make a choice. What am I looking for? But you have to actually ask yourself that. Am I looking for what I want to see or am I looking for stuff I'd rather not deal with? I ain't Tova, how can I develop? But you need to make your own mantras. So I have my mantras. Gamlahu Tovu Lo Rat, repair his good, repay his good and not his bad. But I would say that to myself, right? Or educate, don't be raped. Like I can say that to myself. I see the situation and I know I need to educate and not be raped. Like I'm right about to let out at somebody. I was once making, I'll just tell you how that applies practically. Somebody had just converted. They just got out of the mikvah and I was making a welcome to the Jewish people meal for him. 40 people. We all made different things. We had it spread out on my, you know, my whole house is clean and the tables are set and the dining and the, the center island was covered in like tablecloths and everybody had their dishes. And one person had made a sliced tomato salad with spices and all that stuff. And my teenage son came home from yeshiva and said, can I make a barbecue? So I'm thinking, fine, outside. Outside, you can make a barbecue for yourself. You want burgers outside, away from us, just leave me alone. Then he comes in with his burger and he picks up that spiced tomato that somebody else made and cut with love and put everything. He said, do you think if I rinse this off, it'll be good on my burger? And I was like, I'm gonna wring your neck right now, but I didn't. I said, okay, educate, don't be right, educate, don't be right. So I actually pulled him aside and I said, let's just look at this whole room here. What is happening? You see, Bob just converted and we're making a party to celebrate his entrance into the Jewish people. And you're thinking about your burger and can you rinse a piece of tomato that somebody else carefully cut and spiced to celebrate his entrance? Is that the right question right now? It's like, Pretty oh, good. I guess not. Right, right. So that's educate, don't be right. I could have just yelled at him and he could have just left and there would have been a huff. But instead I taught him how to like room read. Look, what's happened? It took a one second longer. One, but he learned, he saw, he's 17 and he's got like, oh yeah, 
a lot of people care about this person, spent the time to make this, they're celebrating his entrance into the Jewish people. I shouldn't be so selfish to think about my burger and my tomato and rinse off somebody else's hard work in the midst of all that's going on. Educate, don't be right. Do me a favor. How did you go from the screamy mommy, like, are you joking? You're already 17 years old. You can't read a room yourself, you know. Practice, not- practice practice being the person you have to do it piece by piece and say it on a regular basis educate don't be right like when your kid puts their the milk at the edge of the table and how many times you say put it on, behind your plate put it behind your plate and then they turn and they whap it right so educate don't be right it happens all the time something gets spilled so instead of saying how many times do i have to tell you to put your milk behind your plate you just say when you put your milk so close to the other table it's more likely to get spilled please go into the kitchen and get a schmacka Done. Not as a rag to go clean it. Okay. Not as a rag. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Fantastic. Okay. So tell us a little bit about Core. What is Core, and why did you start it, and what's what's the goals? Well, the goals of Core is to strengthen our inner core, our give us inner strength, with inner strength and outer strength both. So the goal of Core is. Wait. To- it's, I'm sorry. What's inner strength and outer strength again? I I, I kind of am fuzzy on that. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Slow on the uptake. Okay. <laughs> that there's so many tools inside of us that we could be strong with and we need to work from the outside to strengthen it. It's a symbiotic process. Your inner strength only flows as you are giving to the outside and you need to also be shored up by the outside. There's a symbiotic process through which you can repair the world and the world is repaired by you repairing you. You have to work on yourself. That affects the whole world. As you work on the world, that affects you. We have this symbiotic process. So in, inner strength would be tapping into my own ability to zip my lip when he comes home with a cabbage. Okay, right. that's inner strength. And or to see the good. Zipping your lip is only, a, is only a temporary step. It really is. Zipping your lip is holding back what you wish you could say. <laughs> what I'm saying is actually see what's good right? Go further than that. But the first step is zip your lip. But okay, go further than that and look right. for what's good. So you have inner strength. Look for what's good. Skip step two. Focus on what you want to develop. See things that are positive. Um, give it back to Hashem. Give Hashem the control and then don't sweat the stuff that you can't control. Be thankful for what's in your life and stand with people even when they're annoying, right? That's, those are, that's inner strength. All that requires inner strength. And then we need people to shore us up. And this we outer strength. Others. Outer strength is outer strength. Outer. That's outer like strength. the two people holding Moshe's arms up. That's right. That's the outer strength. Getting it's support. Creating community, getting, giving and getting support. So imagine if we all step in next to somebody else to support them, everyone has more support, including me, because somebody stepped next to me too. So that's what I'm trying to do is help women take responsibility for their own inner journey and for the peace of our community. Like really core's goal? Yeah, okay. we have a question, but then I want you to explain what core is. Okay, sorry, go ahead with the question. Yeah, no, that's, somebody was just asking if, um, meaning can you have one without the other or do you need both the outer and the inner in order for it to work? For In order for it to work optimally, you need both. They can both work by themselves, but optimally they work together and they, they strengthen each other. So it's like saying, can you get your teeth clean with just a toothbrush or just toothpaste? Well, a toothbrush with no toothpaste helps. And toothpaste just on your finger helps. But the two work together way better. (laughs) Got it. Got it. Okay, fine. Okay, so now start again with explain core. Okay, so the goal of core is to strengthen the it's to strengthen the Jewish people, really to create communities, to create communities that are warm enough that everybody wants to stay in them and inspiring enough that everybody wants to join them. And the only way we can create communities that we all want to live in is by creating people that we all want to be and live with. So we need to become that person and we need to help or invite and support others to become people that we want to live with to create warm and inspiring communities. That's our job, to light up the whole world. That's the job of the Jewish people is to shine everywhere we go. So shine in our homes, shine in our marriages, shine in our families, shine in our communities, and our whole community collectively should be shining so brightly that people say, oh my gosh, what is that? That's amazing. Whatever you're on, I want a piece of that. That's great. That's awesome. So how, what is the practical? Uh, how, so do- how do we do that? So, 
So CORE operates, in th we have three different programs. One is training mentors. So we have a two-year intensive training program for female pastoral care providers, mentors, guides, spiritual guides, women who are helping women in their pastoral needs uh, approach whatever physical, spiritual, emotional challenges that they face. So mentorship, guidance. We train them and we provide guidance. Two, <clears throat> we help the Jewish communal influencers, Jewish communal leaders, professionals, whatever you want to call them, those that are helping build the Jewish community, Kyle teachers, Rebbitzins, Torah teachers, Makarvot, you know, outreach workers, whatever they are, even the heads of nurseries and JCCs and women who are building the Jews, we support them. Actually, that's what CORE does. CORE supports those who are strengthening Kali Israel. CORE supports those who are strengthening the Jewish people. Supports them in what way? So we, we support them emotionally and, um, and with resources and connect them. So I have broad networks of women, of let's just say bride teachers, women who teach brides. I have 300 of them in a network from 12 different countries, all with peer support, sharing not just 12 different countries. That's a wow. I want to hear a real wow. Belzer, Chabad, Satmar, Yotzot, Halakha, Lakewood, Modern Orthodox, right? All in one group in one fabulous conversation, respecting each other and sharing ideas on how to actually support women as they grow, learning the laws and the philosophy that affect their marriages and how to apply that, right? It's an amazing thing. So, and that's just one piece, right? That's that. And then I have, um, you know, a, an, ex an idea exchange for women who are public speakers where they can just share what's the best book? How do you have a good story? How do you back this up? What's the source for that? How to express this concept? How do I work with that person? So I have that. And then the, so that's the middle part is supporting women who are strengthening Kali Israel. And then the third place where we support women who are strengthening the Jewish people is make a micro community. Every individual person should have a little core circle, a circle that strengthens their core. So three to seven, 10 women, your inner core that you meet with on a regular basis. You wanna bring that group together, core supports you. We have a whole idea bank of what you could do and what you could, not, not necessarily a learning circle. You might want to learn. You might want to do art. You might want to have a meditation. You might want to have a kumsitz. You might want to hike. You might want to watch a movie and discuss it. You might want to watch a TED Talk and discuss it. Like whatever it is, we have lots of ideas and how you can grow your core circle. And we support and connect the women who bring those circles together, who bring that circle together. And then we bring the circles together, creating community out of the micro communities. So it's awesome. How can, they get, how can they, people get in touch with this? How can they find Wait, out? and also someone wants to know, is it only for like, um, you know, people that are in the business of, of like mentoring, like college teachers, et cetera, or whatever, or is it also just for the regular woman who's, you know, a housewife? Three branches, training mentors to be able to provide mentorship, working with those who help the Jewish people, the, the college teachers, et cetera, housewives, moms, grandmothers, right? Three different branches. So yes, we work anyone who's building the Jewish people in any way in your friendships. You're not even married and you have friends and you want to build them. Great. We'll support you. You're married and you're trying to build your home. Great. We'll support you. Your grandmother and you're trying to build your generations via their support. Great. We'll support you, right? Women, of course, supports women who are strengthening the Jewish people. That's what we do. That's so, um, <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay, right. that's fantastic. Okay, so they can go www.coretorah.org. Core Torah, C O R E Torah. T O R A H. There was no core is already taken by a million different people. So Core Torah, that's our website. The name of the organization is Core, just Core. Doesn't stand for anything except for our inner core, right? That's what we're strengthening, although it could, but it doesn't stand for connecting ourselves to the Rebona Shalom and each other. It could stand for that. Oh, I like that. <laughs> okay, fine. So good. So now let just to wrap this up, because we're, we're running out of time here. I just want to say, what are like three things that our viewers could do today or this week that to, to, to grow their own inner strength? Okay, I'm going to tell you a um, huh, three things to grow their own inner strength. I mean, I talk to Hashem about it all the time. So I'd say, talk to Hashem, talk to yourself and talk to the people around you. That's the three things. But here's the conversation I have with Hashem on a regular basis. And it's a verse that we say before we say the um, Shemona Esrei prayer. If we say it, but you could say this verse without it. And I have to say it in Hebrew and then English, but it, may, it matters in Hebrew. Hashem sfatai tiftach, letacha. Please Hashem, open up my lips that my mouth should say your praise. But lips really are borders or boundaries. That's what safa is, like the edge of an ocean. 
So this is what I say, Hashem, this is as big as I am. I have these borders and boundaries and I've only accomplished this. And this is not big enough for that task. So please, Hashem, open up my borders and boundaries and help me flow to a place I've never flowed to before. But please don't let that flow be messy and all over the place. Please direct it into your praise that I should do the right thing. I should go in the right direction and, and be directed, but I need to be expanded. So please, Hashem, expand me and direct me. So talk to Hashem and then talk to yourself and say, you know what? I've got this. I have the capacity. I'm an other sider, right? I come from the world of souls and I'm headed to the world of souls. I am a spiritual being with strength and I can use this physical world to grow things in amazing ways. Talk to yourself and then talk to those around you with kindness, bring them into warmth and kindness and say, how can I support you? Because once you start to support others, the flow goes through you and leaves that residual strength inside of you. You become a strengthened, a strengthened person as you strengthen others. So those are my tips. Talk to Hashem, talk to yourself, talk to others. That's gorgeous. Last question and we're... we're no, actually not a question. Somebody was just commenting. This is so amazing. Thank you so much. So much information. And I'm looking forward to checking out your site. Oh, your that's right. Okay, fine. All right, very good. Great. Lisa, this was fantastic. You gave us all strength, and it's good, inner strength. We learned a lot from this. This is go gorgeous, and you should be really blessed in all the beautiful work you're doing of strengthening women. It's, 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 it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Amazing. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank this you. is Larry Timer for the Ladies Talk Show. Thanks for joining us. And I hope this gave you some really strong inner strength, how to tap it and how to use it. Everybody should be strong and well and healthy. See you next time.